one good thing about having your offense face T.J. Watt in practice is that you find out very quickly where they stand with their shortcomings. One bad thing about it is that no one else has one of him. So what does it actually tell you? Good morning to you. Good Wednesday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Steelers. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into hockey and or baseball. I also offer Daily Shots of Penguins and Pirates where you found this. The Steelers completed day six of training camp, the second one in pads out in Latrobe yesterday. I'll be out there to observe day seven with the opening of the public practice set for 155 p.m. I will be watching the offensive line. This is going to be the focus that I've got for the day, principally because I don't know that a whole lot else matters if they don't get the job done. And I know everybody's hanging on every syllable that's spoken Regarding the quarterbacks, I get that. Kenny Pickett's not with the second team. What does this mean? Not much. Not much. As I've been saying related to Mitch Trubisky, Mason Rudolph, and Kenny, not much. Not a solitary decision will be finalized or maybe even moved toward finalization at this stage of camp. There's a long way to go. My belief whether it's my wish or not, my belief is that the job is Trubisky's to lose. And when I say to lose, I mean to catastrophically lose, like he'd have to be very bad. And if there's one thing, maybe only one thing that can be culled from these first handful of days, the first couple days in pads, it's this. The defense continues to be well ahead of, of the offense. On one hand, you expect that. That's where all the experienced guys are. That's where TJ is. And especially on a day like yesterday, when you don't have Najee Harris, you don't have Pat Fryermuth, you still don't have Deontay Johnson, you're going to end up seeing a whole lot of blah, even if plays are executed properly. But at some point, that's got to change. And that's going to start. It'll have to start up front. And that's why I found it significant that yesterday, two different very important people within the Steelers structure spoke up about the offensive line and not exactly in a bad way. This was from Omar Khan's first press conference in Latrobe yesterday morning. Yeah, we, we're, we're really excited about that, the offensive line room. Uh, we added some um, some key pieces there. Um um, you know, we've, we've, we've only got the opportunity to see them in pads once so far and, you know, a lot of practice left to happen. And but we, we really like the room. I mean, we added some good guys as uh, just some leaders um, and we're excited. Likes the offensive line room, likes what he's seeing, likes what he's hearing. Good. Here was Mike Tomlin. A few hours later, this after practice. I don't know that I'm looking to be optimistic. I'm just going to keep snapping the ball and allow the growth to happen. And, and it has. Uh, but it's a reasonable expectation for it to continue. Not exactly effusive, but not exactly lighting a fire under anyone's butt either. You know what I'm saying? If there were meaningful concerns, specific concerns, somebody would have said something. Because this is right around that time when you start doing that lighting of fires under butts. And it hasn't happened yet with the O-line. This portion of Daily Shot of Steelers is brought to you by Point Park University. Choose from nearly 100 career-focused programs leading to bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees. Choose when and how you'd prefer to do that studying whether it's at Point Park's gorgeous downtown Pittsburgh campus, whether it's online, maybe a flexible hybrid format would work best for you. Find out more about all of this at pointpark.edu. I don't mean to suggest here that they've been great. The offensive line, of course, always have their hands full with TJ. Alex Highsmith tends to perform very well in practice settings. That's not a knock on him. He, he just does. So for the most part, pass protection's been kind of eh, whereas the run 
the run blocking has been pretty good. Tomlin acknowledged that himself. He's seeing growth. You heard him use the word. When it comes to finding the lanes, moving people out of them, moving people back. And as any offensive lineman will attest, and I'm talking about any level of football anywhere, run blocking is where you want to find your rhythm. You want to find your confidence. And if I'm Matt Canada, I'd want to find my foundation for this offense there. Make sure that I'm able to get four or five yards on first down. Move those sticks a little bit closer. Don't get to the point like they did a million times last year where you're stepping back at third and nine or even third and ten because you couldn't get anywhere right off the bat. It was an absolute killer for that offense. And this despite, I'm going to point out the obvious here, Najee Harris ending up in the Pro Bowl. To date, going left to right, Dan Moore has gotten some of the stronger reviews from coaches, from teammates, of anyone in camp at any position. That's a very good thing, considering Dan's a second-year guy and was coming off a season in which, you know, he was part of that group. Also, he's the one that's going against Highsmith every day. Kevin Dotson, also on that left side, but at guard, has outperformed Kendrick Green. To whatever it is that you can discern to this point. I'm not extrapolating it. But Dotson, his strength, and he'll tell you this himself, is the run blocking. He might be as capable as anyone on that line of just shoving people backward. You don't have to overthink it always when it comes to the run block, although in the Canada schemes, you end up doing a lot of just following a guy or shoving him a certain way when you've got student body left, student body right. I think you know what I'm talking about. It's not the same type of blocking, but if you're looking for just straight ahead, we've got to have this yard or two or three, Dotson's the guy you want out there, not green. Mason Cole's been at center. He's going to stay at center, and he's been pretty much noise-free, which is maybe the highest compliment that you can pay to someone who does that specific job. You can't expect them to be some kind of pulling superstar like a Marquise Pouncey in his younger years, but you can expect clean work there and clean execution of the blocks. And on the right side, well, let's just say that after all the money that was spent on James Daniels and Chooks Okorafor, who are getting about, probably when you put them all together, three quarters to 80% of all the cash that's being paid to that group, They've been what you're paying for so far. TJ's still making his impact. But again, TJ isn't someone who's going to show up on the Steelers' opponent's schedule at any point in the season. Here's what I'm saying. Without taking it too far, and certainly without taking it any further than either Khan or Tomlin did yesterday, so far, so good. Let's see where it goes. When we come back, J1Q... Shot of Steelers is brought to you by our friends at Mike's Beer Bar. They're located directly across Federal Street from the NC Park. They are the one, the only, the premier destination in Pittsburgh for craft beer. More than 500 craft beers available, more than 350 of those local, and more than 80 of those on tap. Mike's can't be topped, not for beer, not for the awesome kitchen and menu that's available, not for all the special events that are going on there. Check them out online at mikesbeerbar.com. Mike's Beer Bar, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. And today's J1Q comes from Tom, who says, Hey, DK, we all know offensive line is your favorite topic. Left guard this year is one of the biggest camp battles, and Dotson and Green are very different types of guards. Which player do you think fits the Matt Canada offense and which player would you like to see win the battle? Tom, I am all in 
on Dotson winning this battle, both from the prediction standpoint and from the advocating standpoint. I believe he's the right choice. I believe he's addressed to the satisfaction of the coaches, the concerns that they had about him last summer that I reported on. And I believe, I don't know how to say this without sounding really mean here, he's just a better football player. The next thing that I see from Green where I go, oh yeah, that's something that he does really well, will be the first. I'm not aware of what hold it is that he has on this management slash coaching staff or what it is that they're seeing or what it is that they saw when they drafted him. Because so far, absolutely all of it has been wrong. They saw a potential center. He'd only taken a few snaps in college. That sure didn't work out. They saw somebody, at least the head coach did, who could come in and comfortably wear number 53 and get rested in preseason games because he was due to be anointed the next in the great lineage of Pittsburgh centers. Where was that? On what planet did any of that transpire? So, Rather than take your question in the literal sense, which of the two do I feel should be the guy? Because to me, it's just, I I don't see what it is that they see in green. I'd rather look at Dotson and singularly challenge him to be the best that he can be. Look, we all saw a couple years ago when Matt Filer went down and they had to throw Dotson out there at left guard. I mean, throw him out there in the middle of the season. And we saw how effective he was. He was doing things that Filer, for whatever reason at that point in the season, wasn't pulling off anymore. I don't know if he was hurt. I don't know if he got wore down. If somebody solved him, who knows what. But Dotson came out there and was just bulldozing people. Five, even ten yards back. It was comical. And when you see this man in person, And I've stood right in front of him. He is a giant. He and Chooks, between the two of them, look like they could take on an army. So I I honestly don't want to hear about how, you know, he needs to be better than Kendrick Green, who's done nothing. I want to see Dotson become the best that he can be. And everything that I'd heard last summer suggested that this wasn't happening, whether it was prep or whatever else. It wasn't his shape or his conditioning, though that got misconstrued by a lot of people. He just wasn't getting himself ready enough. There's a lot to learn as a young offensive lineman. There's a lot of film to watch. There's a lot of asking of questions to do. I had a good talk with Dotson a couple weeks ago and brought a lot of this stuff up. And his response, plain and simple, was that he's ready. He's ready. He's prepared. Well, okay, great. Now go knock some people over. But while you're at it, make sure you know everything that it is that you're supposed to do. Make sure you're fully prepared in every way and then go be a great left guard, not better than Kendrick Green. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everyone. Listening to Daily Shot of Steelers, the all offensive line edition, I should add. We'll do another one of these tomorrow with my observations that I'll make at Latrobe this afternoon.